Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about a wonderful topic. It's, it's about artists, and I love artists. I love art, and, uh, and I think all of you do too, and it's so much a part of our community. And we're gonna be talking about particularly the artist community uh, and what is happening in Peekskill and the renaissance of Peekskill uh, through the arts. And I have uh, several guests today. One is Livia Strauss, who is the co-founder and director of the the Hudson Valley Center for Contemporary Art, which is HVCCA. Correct. And welcome. Thank welcome. you. It's Thank great you to have you here. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> and um, Lana Yu, uh, who is an artist living in the Peace Hill area and in one of the um, one of the developments that was built for artists to encourage artists to come. So we welcome you too. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great mm -hmm. to have you both. Livia, I think I met you a long time ago and I know, you know, you've lived in Westchester for a long time and but you've you it seems like you've had an interest in art all your life, uh, you know, to open up, it's not everybody that opens up a museum, so, uh, and your museum is contemporary art, but tell us a little bit about your background and how you ever got into this. Into art. Um, my background is actually, and I think maybe that's part of what attracted me to Peekskill. My father was an immigrant from Europe. Um, my family loved beautiful things, but they didn't have much money to buy it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, whatever they could afford, whether it was something like the ceramic piece on the coffee table. Right. Uh, my father loved having beautiful things around. But it was really uh, Mark, my husband, who was, is my co-founder with him of the museum. He was the one who was always the collector. Baseball cards, camera equipment, you name it. He loved collecting. And um, we got married very young. We were high school sweethearts. Married when we were 20 and immediately went out and bought a work of art. And mm -hmm. that was on my fledgling salary as a public school teacher. Uh, so basically a full month's rent uh, mm -hmm. went for this first piece of art, which had a bit of a history. It was an artist that we knew from illustrations and books. And then uh, five years into the marriage, we, were, we moved to St. Louis for Mark to do his residency. And he took a walk with our son one day and he came back and he said, I saw this art. And I don't quite understand it, but something about it that's very attractive to me. And that was our introduction to contemporary art. So we had always visited museums. We loved going to art fairs, the street fairs. But that was our first real investment in something that was quite expensive. It was a full year's salary for Mark. And we invested in our first piece of contemporary art, which was a Kenneth Nolan painting. Mm. And then once you get hooked, then the rest becomes uh, a bit of history. So uh, you keep purchasing uh, keep different purchasing, paintings. keep purchasing. And, you know, we met other collectors in St. Louis when we were living there. St. Mm -hmm. Louis was a real haven for contemporary art. Kept looking and uh, kept buying. Didn't think of ourselves as collectors. We were buying mm -hmm. art and living mm -hmm. with it. And um, Did you just have too much art in your home after a while? Well, what ended up happening <laughs> some 40 years later <laughs> is the museum wanted to do an exhibition of the collection. And uh, about 50 works traveled. And all of a sudden we had nice clean walls with nothing mm -hmm, on them. Mm -hmm. So first thing we did was paint, which we hadn't done because it's hard to move the art. We always loved very big art. And um, then we started buying more art. And when the art returned, it was actually a show that started at the Harm Museum in Florida and it went to different universities. And when the art came back, there was no place to put it. And um, because we collect young artists, that's mm -hmm. always been our, our, our love, to be able to dialogue with the artists, to talk to them about the art, to learn what they're doing. So we felt that the artists were really being cheated. We couldn't show them a lot of the art. And um, we started this discussion. Do we put it in storage and wait for museums to borrow it? Or do we establish a place and do something for a community that would involve mm -hmm. education? And we started looking for the right city. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a location that was multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic, a place that was struggling a bit economically, mm -hmm. 
struggling with social issues, mm -hmm. um, and where it could benefit from educational programs and from really the infusion of a lot of tourists coming to the area because the collection has always mm -hmm. been international. And that's how we ended up in, in Peekskill. Peek I right. uh, love the and fact that it was an arts community. Here. And you're right on uh, Route 6 Correct. in Peekskill. Or how do you describe it to, to people? And it had been, I think, an old, was it an old warehouse? I can't remember. It was what. a small Home Depot. Oh, okay. Panorama. We right. still have people coming to look at wood-burning stoves. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but we needed basically a plain square box. Mm -hmm. Because it was just about the art. It wasn't about the architecture. So we're exactly one hour from the train station, one mile from the train station in Peekskill, all uphill, mm -hmm. and um, just uh, several blocks beyond the city. It's a um, plain building, now has a saying on the outside. It's what's outside that counts, which is done by a contemporary artist, actually an artist and his twin brother, Adam mm -hmm. DeVille, known as Skewville. Um, and that identifies, that's the landmark now of the museum. Mm -hmm. But it's a surprise for people. When mm -hmm. they walk in, they don't anticipate what they're going to find inside. Right, it certainly is. Which is very avant-garde right. art. <laughs> how did you meet Lana, or how did, Lana, how did you get connected with all of this? Are you one of the young artists that Livia was discussing? I'm not sure if I'm so young, but I was lucky enough to, to cross paths with Livia, uh, just being in the same community. Somehow, uh, while well, I was already coming to her museum and we would kind of just see each other, um, but she was you know, kicking off the Peekskill Project a couple years ago, and somehow she got wind of my project, the What Matters Project, and she had encouraged me to apply to the curators who were selecting the projects for that mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really what initiated um, our relationship, was her belief in the project it being accepted into the Peekskill Project and it really uh, kicking off, um, well, just before the Peekskill Project and that giving it momentum and it's since continued and she's been very encouraging for me to continue with my project and now, you know, most recently with this um, NEA grant that we just received to continue the project right. in new art forms. A lot of good so, things. Now, how did you become yeah. an artist? Did you think you were going to be an artist when you were a young child? Were you I, I there with your pencil pad and paint and everything else? Um, I always loved to, to create with my hands and my imagination. I loved to draw and make things. Um, very much grew up in that environment with a mother that um, could make anything with food or materials and a father who was a tinkerer. He was an engineer by training but was an inventor and would always be in his workshop making things. Um, but I never thought art was actually a legitimate profession. Mm -hmm. Growing up in an immigrant Chinese American family, it was something that I was very uh, clearly told was not um, a respectable profession. I had a, an aunt who lives in Switzerland who was sort of living in the, the countryside um, with no phone, and they were sort of depicted as this sort of marginal life, and so I never thought it was something that I could do. Um, and it is a hard life. I have to say, now that I'm living that life. <laughs> um, but I've, I've always loved art and always wanted to be an artist. And um, now later in my life, I feel that I'm finally coming into that. But I had a whole other career as actually a designer and a creative director, um, which was also creative, right. but it was. In a different, different way. In a different a capacity. Different and that's an art right. too, but it's, it's a different life. Right. Um, so, Libby, so. how do you find the young artist? Are, are, I mean, you're settled in Peekskill, not in New York City, you know, where some people would say, you know, but you think of art and museums more in the city, I suppose, but, but you know, we're developing a lot of them in our, in our counties, uh, you know, as we, as we leave further from, from the city. But how do, you, how do you find the young artist? Uh, how do you um, encourage them to have displays? and so on in your shows? Um. I think, um, you know, maybe the best way to address that too is to kind of take a look at what's going on in the art world. Mm -hmm. Because um, there's always been talent, a lot of talent. You just, it doesn't take a lot of looking, you know, to find it. It just really takes the interest. Mm -hmm. And Mark and I have always been back and forth to New York. Um, but we started actively looking at the New York galleries the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s, which was very different then than the art market now. 
and there were a group of uh, couples that used to go to the galleries, especially in the East Village, on a regular basis. And artists, young artists, were experimenting with a lot of different types of art. One of the most notorious was Jeff Koons when he did his basketballs in fish tanks. Mm -hmm. um, but it was exciting. Uh, we were looking at new things that artists were experimenting with. They were looking at and they were trying to do something innovative and something new all the time. That community, it was dangerous to walk around that community, but the artists were there and the galleries were opening and closing overnight. It was, it was just a happening scene. And the collectors didn't care about the value and they didn't care about the status symbol and they didn't care about a lot of the dialogue that's going on now in the art world. There were no scouts going around looking for you. You went, you looked on your own, and if you fell in love with it, it was affordable, you could buy it. Mm -hmm. So that was our background and that's always been the intriguing thing for us. So whenever we do an exhibition, if there's a theme, now it's much easier. You go on the internet and you look for artists doing that type mm -hmm. of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, yesterday, um, my ed director of education and Lana and I were sitting together and we were talking about Lana's work and after she left, we were talking about the upcoming exhibition. Mm -hmm. And when, when people who are interested and somewhat creative and somewhat knowledgeable get together, the ideas just keep growing. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're on the internet and yeah, this artist looks amazing. And that one looks mm -hmm. amazing. And then you call them and you go and you mm -hmm. visit. When we did a show on Eastern Europe, we went to Eastern Europe. We visited within a two year period over 250 studios. Mm -hmm. And it becomes yes. like a right. connecting directory. Right. And in and Manhattan, then you have to you figure know. out when you're, when you're over there. So, so here you're, you're seeing all this wonderful art and then in your head you're trying to think about what could you exhibit here in, in your Peak Scale Museum. And that's very different than collecting. Mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. can do a theme and you have to mm -hmm. think about okay what is the community going to love mm -hmm. it's not just mm -hmm. about the art you know it's um i i i don't know if now's the time to introduce something about the waterfront but it's an observation um so the iconic diver on the waterfront you know when i saw that in the artist studio and i was doing studio visits in uh, jersey city Mm -hmm. And uh, I passed by Carol Feuermann's studio, and there was this diver. Mm -hmm. And it was the maquette size. I looked at her, I said, I need that for peak skill. I don't want you to paint it. I don't want it being realistic. I just mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. a silhouette on the river. I want that diver. And that became the initiation of a piece that I knew people in peak skill and visiting peak skill right, would love. simply love. And they've had it uh, for now at the waterfront for a few years. For a few years. Right. And so you were the connector on that. So you've kind of moved your museum out of the four out walls. Out of the museum. <laughs> onto the Hudson River out a bit. Out of the museum. <laughs> right, right. And that's the concept of Peak Skill Project. Several of the sculptures on the waterfront are a result of previous Peak Skill Projects. Lana mentioned and, the. Yeah, um, Lana, you're, you, you're involved in the Peak Skill Project also. Um, uh, from two years ago. From two years ago. Yeah. And what were you working on? Oh, well, yeah, just okay. to share uh, my What Matters project. It's mm -hmm. called What Matters, and it simply mm -hmm. asks the question, uh, what matters to you? Mm -hmm. And it, we've created spaces uh, throughout the city at different venues, including the Peekskill Project. At the Peekskill Project, we kicked off at the gazebo. We right. simply set up tables and chairs, and we invited people to come and write the words. Mm -hmm, just to mm -hmm. reflect on those thoughts and then we pinned up the words so it became a dialogue uh, between what someone is feeling eternally having it come out and then sharing those words with the community and the purpose was for people to share their thoughts with one another and break down the barriers of separation mm -hmm. and to really bring people of all different backgrounds and cultures um, together uh, it was supposed to be a unifying um, sort of thing. So as a result of what matters, there are places in the community where uh, what people have said are, are on display? Uh, yeah, we actually created a mural of the words, which is currently up uh, actually mm -hmm. across the street. From the um, cable studio, right? Yeah, exactly. So we've had, um, to, to date, um, over 2,000 written responses, and we took 
a selection, 12 of the most universal and compelling phrases. And we created mm -hmm. a community mural of the words. Um, this was last year. Um, we, well, it we just went up last year, but it was created the previous two years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a permanent mural of, of the words shared by the community. Uh, so that becomes a, a permanent artifact of mm -hmm. the, the very uh, personal interactive experience. Um, so that's a piece of public art. Right. And um, it's an example, a great example, I think, like all the public art throughout Peekskill of how art can really transform the built environment. And it can be a unifier for people. People see it, they have a physical response to it, an emotional response. It's a way to engage people and get them connecting and talking. Mm -hmm. um, all does, the different does art Does it forms. help with the economics yeah. of a community also? Uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, that's just, obvious. It, it's, a, it's a huge economic driver, whether people really understand or acknowledge it. Um, on, on a very um, subtle and obvious level, it changes, like I was saying, our built environment. It's, it's mm -hmm. naturally uplifting. That's going to change the feeling of the entire environment. And that is going to change the activity around that piece of art. Like in Peekskill, if there was, imagine if Peekskill had no public art, what would that mm -hmm, look mm -hmm, like? Mm -hmm. um, well, there probably it, are some communities that, are there, that just really don't have much art? In the, they may have, memor no, because they probably have a lot of memorials and things like that, that, um, you know, are art in a different yes, way, statues yes. of different people and so on. But, but I think, I still think there are some communities that don't have, much art in them uh, because you have to you you have to spend yeah. some money or you have to have somebody that you know you've got to have somebody That's in the so community true. who really cares about it exactly. and of course Peekskill inviting artists to live in Peekskill I think probably has made a big difference in the art and, and having a museum just makes such a big difference yeah that was a great choice on the part of the city planners <laughs> to really drive economic development I mean, as you know, 20 years ago or so, that was a very specific plan that was set in motion to draw artists here to revitalize mm -hmm. Peekskill. And that's been very successful. And later, of course, the museum uh, came to town, and that's been amazing in terms of supporting the arts. And it's absolutely, I think, changed the economics of, of Peekskill, whether people really acknowledge it. It's, it's not like the artists themselves have solely been responsible for the transformation. I mean, that transformation happen from all different kinds of activity that are mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. The immigrant population coming in, the new businesses making investments, the things that are going on at City Hall, changing policy, being inviting to new businesses. All those things combined, including the arts, it creates all this really amazing vitality. Right, um, right. And it's bringing it, people, when you have your, your exhibits, Livia, I mean, you're just bringing people in from, from all over to, to come well, and I visit. Think, uh, yeah, I think, um, one of the goals of the museum was, when it was established was to address some of the economic issues. Mm -hmm. And because the, the exhibits are international, because the Peekskill project is international, it means that there's an international tourist population that's coming to Peekskill that didn't know about it before, that had never heard of Peekskill. So I know when I travel different places around the world and visit artist studios, they all know Peekskill now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they know it because of Peekskill Project, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, not necessarily recognizing the name of the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Peekskill Project has become the driver. It's kind of the tail wagging the dog. Let's, let's, let's get into that. Uh, what is, how long has the Peekskill Project been on for and exactly what, what does it focus on? Well, it's now going into its sixth iteration. So the mm -hmm. first time we did it was in 2004. Um, done in sync with a program that was introduced by the local development company, Ginsburg Development. They had uh, a ferry going to the different city towns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they wanted each place to do a special event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were just opening the museum, and I had in mind that I wanted to do something that would be a major public arts festival. Because when you do a festival like that, you're able to incorporate artists that are doing works that are not necessarily commercially viable. So you're able to support them and to highlight their works, whether it's performance or installation mm -hmm. work. And because we're drawing from the Netherlands, from Denmark, from really all over the world, from China, Korea, 
and the curators are coming from different countries. That's the population we're bringing into Peekskill. Mm -hmm. What's enriched the, um, the community itself is that each of the artists is tasked with connecting whatever they produce to the history of the region, which means they have mm -hmm. to research it. So through their works, we've learned a lot also about the history, and that's why it's so wonderful mm -hmm. in terms of involving the education programs too. But I think it's been a driving force. Those tourists come here, they rent places, they stay in the hotels, they go to the restaurants. We work very closely with the bid. When they have Christmas, we do their windows, uh, the windows on Main Street. We do events, so we try working closely with them so that art does become a driving force. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when you say there must be places that don't have art exhibited. That's always my... Um, Am I wrong? <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> how, you how you describe art. Right, that's right. Because right. some cities are beautiful because the landscaping is beautiful, so uh -huh. that's their form of art. art. And it's one of my uh, pet gripes, pet peeves in the school system when art presents as a separate discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we do education programs at which, the museum which or Which I think Lana, you, you have yeah. education programs both for adults and, and for children? And for children. And I think we actually right, even we have, some, have some images mm -hmm. that uh, can be projected. In terms of the adult education, we are offering drawing classes now. In terms of the children's education, we have a fantastic program that's actually nursery, nursery school oriented, where the kids come in from these, for these mini semesters. Uh, there's a new school in Garrison that's a bilingual school. So this is the third year we've done a program with them. So the children come to us four weeks in a row. They study mm -hmm. two works of art each session, mm -hmm. but really study it intensely. Mm. And um, it's a way of connecting them that art isn't a discrete discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I sit down and I have a snack, I mm -hmm. can make a sculpture out of that snack. I can right. make it look beautiful, and then I can eat it. And, you know, if I'm making something that's like these beautiful sculptures that contain seeds, I can create a whole garden from that. So it's like taking a look at art and saying, art isn't separate. Artists mm -hmm. are part of a culture, they're part of a history. And if I understand that culture and history, I'm going to understand what the art is. So when we did the LEAP program with the Peak Skill Schools, that was part of the program. The kids had a whole curriculum. And um, I know I have one image of Folker de Young's piece, which is a, a long-term installation at that mu the museum, but it's an educational piece. It's based on Abraham Maslow's human development theory, that once people have their basic needs, they only want more and more and more power. And Folker did this huge installation of Hamburger Hill, Vietnam War, what, 1969? Everybody mm -hmm. died for a useless mm -hmm. piece of property. So he mm -hmm. shows us in his sculpture that as human beings, we all end up the same way. We're all mortal. But how we get there makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, the museum is very committed to education. It was so much of the attraction of what Lana was doing. I mean, this, this what seems like a simple idea. I'm just going to ask people what matters to them. And you put it in one or two words, right. and it was brilliant. And, and the mural is gorgeous. Right. It's changed a whole building. Right. Thank so you. that's the philosophy that you used in, in your creation, to just talking to people about right. really matters to them. Were you surprised by, by what people said? Surprised, yeah. delighted, um, uh -huh. inspired. Um, it's been an amazing project, just everyone sharing with me from their heart what matters to them, tells me every day what matters. Um, but it was really a project um, to reach people. Like Livy was talking about, it's like art's not this rarefied thing, it's not like a, just an isolated sculpture or painting in a museum. Mm -hmm. Art mm -hmm. can be a very personal experience, it's for everyone. Um, it can be a question, it can be a dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the museum is trying to do. Like I think sometimes people think of, oh, an art museum. It's like this thing on the hill, and mm -hmm. there's all this art mm -hmm. I don't understand on the wall. But we're trying to um, break down that separation, bringing the public in, observing, having that art stimulate a course of thought or dialogue. 
and gets people thinking and feeling and that's that's where art happens mm -hmm. when people respond mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing with the educational programs do you um, have well the educational programs or do docents help to create some interest in people's minds not everybody looks at everything in, in, well, nobody looks at everything in the same way, obviously. That's true. That's but true. sometimes people don't even see things that others do. Yeah. Um, and so when you go in an art museum, how, how do you deal with individuals? Um, you well, know? you know, the first thing is we have educational material available for mm -hmm. people to read. Um, but we have a very exciting program coming up this year, so I have to okay, just let mention us know. it. Right. Um, we have a docent training program for the Peekskill Middle School. So the middle school students, and it might go to the high school too, will be trained as docents. Mm -hmm. And they will serve as docents for uh, the museum in order to teach the lower classes mm -hmm. so that when they come to the museum they can understand the art. And one of the critical things that we, we train the children in initially is silence. When you walk into a museum, look at the art. Don't pass by it stand, stay there for a couple of minutes and just mm -hmm. look at it, just think about it. I mean, these little kids who are five years old, six They're years old, not seven used years to old, <laughs> standing oh, and looking it's at actually <laughs> harder for the teachers. It's so hard for the teachers not to go over to the children and say, you should pay attention to that. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to talk. So this kind of silent observation and see how the art speaks to you internally, you know, how, how you react to it. It's, and you're right, everybody sees it differently. So that's the critical thing. So the docent program, we have docents at the museum. A lot of people just want to look. We have docents mm -hmm. if people want to have explanation. We offer docent tours periodically. But to have the children do the docent tour, to know how to ask people the right questions so that they look. Mm -hmm. And they're not asking the questions. They have to respond to the questions. It's kind of Socratic reasoning, where you pull people through a thought process so that you can understand the right. work. I mean, what stands out in my mind, we had a program for fifth and sixth graders. And we had a, a major work by Anselm Kiefer, German artist, born 1945. What was it like to be a German child, born 1945, after the war, carrying this terrible history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how does an artist address that? And we had these children, fifth and sixth graders, they did whole t dissertations they presented to the city That's council. Great. They were amazing. And I'd really be remiss, I, you know, we mentioned the NEA and NISCA, but Arts Westchester has really been a staunch supporter mm -hmm. of everything right. that we've done, right. you know, really championing uh, different projects that we wanted to launch. And Mana, as we, we kind of wrap up, but what kind of project, I know you've gotten some, some awards and so on, um, what are you going to be doing in the future? Well, it's very <laughs> exciting. Know? Thank you so much for asking. I do want to share that um, we are going to be continuing the What Matters program with um, free public workshops, uh, reaching out to, again, people of all backgrounds, socioeconomic mm -hmm. backgrounds, cultures. Um, offering um, people experiences to share what matters to them using uh, literary and performing art expressions. There's, there's going to be six workshops. Um, the first one that we're developing is a senior writing circle. It's going to be at the Field mm -hmm. Library mm -hmm. where we're going to ask seniors um, what mattered to them at different life stages. Um, we're going to do another multilingual uh, intercultural uh, theater piece asking adults to share what matters from um, different corners of the Spanish-speaking community as well as mm -hmm, the English-dominant mm -hmm. community. Right. Um, so there's different ideas like that where we'll be bringing in the community for them to express what matters right. to them in different and so new we'll ways. So we'll all be watching what you're doing <laughs> and we want to thank you both for, for doing such a great job for the arts and for the community and uh, just being such inspiration. So I would encourage everybody to go and visit the uh, Contemporary Art Museum and uh, I want to thank you for being here. If you have any questions at all, just don't hesitate calling my office at 914-941-1111. Thank you very much for watching.